watching the wrap up video for 15 days of foundation if you're new here it is stumbling across this video i did a series called 15 days of foundation where every single day for 15 days i tried out a new foundation i'm gonna link the playlist down below so you can go through and watch all 15 days of first impressions if you missed any this video is just going to be kind of a wrap up of the series and be ranking them 1 to 15 so you can see my favorites and my least favorites I'm not going to go super in depth about each product because I did a full review on each one. I also have a little surprise for you guys, so let's get the surprise out of the way, then I'm going to jump into ranking all the foundations. So I did this series just for fun because I love foundation. Finding a good foundation for your skin is one of the hardest things to find, I feel like. Making first impression videos are some of my favorite videos to film. Doing 15 first impressions normally would have taken me probably four months to do. I know a lot of you guys follow me for my foundation reviews. If you have similar skin to me or if you're pale or if you have acne, before I started YouTube, finding good foundation videos for people that actually didn't have perfect skin and that had pale skin was really hard for me. So I hope that this series was super helpful for you guys. I just wanna say a huge thank you again for all of your support, all of your feedback throughout this whole series. I was honestly blown away. Like I said, I just kinda of did it for fun. I thought it would be a cool thing to try and do and like challenge myself. I'm so grateful for all of you who took the time to leave a positive comment. Doing 15 days of videos, filming, editing, uploading, while you have another job, is freaking hard. The last five days of this were definitely pretty challenging for me and your guys' snaps and tweets and everything are what really kept me going. So I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you who took the time to comment and tweet me or whatever. So surprise time. After getting tons of snaps from you guys after the series ended of people like going through 15 days of foundation depression and I also was like really missing filming foundation videos. I've decided to continue 15 days foundation in some capacity. I talked about this a lot on Snapchat, but I basically asked you guys if you had any ideas how we could continue this. I have never seen so many snaps coming in at one time ever, so thank you guys for all the feedback. So after going through all of your feedback, I think I figured something out. It's not realistic for me to do 15 days of foundation every month at all, and I still want to put other content out on my channel. I really like the idea of 15 days of foundation. I like putting it up at the same time every single day. I don't want to kill the excitement for doing it too often, and I also don't want to kill myself <laughs> for doing it too often, so I think what I'm going to do is do it every three months. So I'm going to like make an image with the 15 days of foundation calendar, and I'll probably tweet it and share it on Instagram or something just so you guys can see what months it'll be taking place, but I think I'm still going to do the 15th to 20th of those months. So the next 15 days of foundation will be in October. In addition to that, since I love putting out foundation videos and if there's like a new foundation coming up that I wanna talk about, I'm gonna be doing foundation Friday. And tons of you guys suggested this on Snapchat. That way you guys will know every Friday there will be a foundation first impression. The first foundation Friday will not be this week, it'll be the next week because I already have a ton of pre-recorded videos right now to go up. So be on the lookout next week, Friday. Make sure you let me know down below what foundation you wanna see for the first ever Foundation Friday on my channel. So I really hope you guys are excited about Foundation Friday and 15 days of foundation. Give this video a thumbs up if you are and if you enjoyed the first series. So let's jump into ranking the foundations. So I have them all ranked here, laid out in my planner. So since finishing the series, I've been testing out different combinations of these and just wearing a few of them again with different powders and primers and stuff just to get a full idea of my thoughts on them. So I obviously wasn't able to test out all 15 again. I just picked some of the ones that I was like most excited about or that almost worked for me, but not quite. Before we jump into foundation, I want to show you the three powders that I pretty much set my face with every single day. My two holy grail setting powders are the It Cosmetics Celebration Foundation Illumination in the shade Fair. I'm like majorly in need of a new one of these. This is my go-to when I want a powder that doesn't take away the finish of the foundation too much, like it keeps the dewiness. I'm wearing it today. It does have a little bit of coverage. You could use this on its own if you don't need a ton of coverage. My other holy grail is the Cover Effects Illuminating Setting Powder. So this is a loose powder. I typically don't gravitate towards loose powders, but this one rocks. This is one of the only loose powders that I feel like actually gives me coverage instead of like weirdly wiping away my, my foundation or concealer or whatever. This has a beautiful finish. I wouldn't say this gives you as glow of a finish as the It Cosmetics powder, but it does still have this like skin-like super soft effect to it. If you have fair skin, the shade of this is beautiful. This one I feel like just looks amazing with any foundation that I try it with. So recently in the past like five days when I've been testing these out, 
I've been using the Maybelline Super Stay Better Skin Powder in the shade 10 Porcelain. And whoa, I just realized this has salicylic acid. This is a beautiful powder. It really does make your face look like skin still. I think I just swallowed some powder. It's a very satin, skin-like finish. And what I like about this is that I feel like the finish of the foundation can still shine through a little bit. The shade of this actually works for me. It's a tad dark, but it can work. So I have been using that with some of the foundations that I'm going to mention. So these are my three current favorite powders. I recommend any of these. Alright, this is going to be a hell of a long video. So let's get into ranking the foundations. So if you watched all 50 days of foundation, you could probably guess what my top slash maybe top two are. So before we get into ranking all these, I did do swatches so you can see shade comparisons. These are not in any particular order. My arm looks great. Thank you. Thank you, Arm Blab, for coming to the party. So right here is the Catrice Foundation. This is the Josie Marin Argan Oil. This is the Ulta Stick Foundation. This is the Hourglass Stick Foundation in Alabaster. And this is the Hourglass Stick Foundation in Blanc. This is the Elsie Foundation. This is Urban Decay Naked Skin. This is YSL Too Chiclat. J-Cat Beauty Skin Sealer. Where are you going? Derma Blend Cover Cream. Cover FX Click Stick, Tarte Rainforest of the Sea, Soap and Glory One Heck of a Blot, Golden Rose Stick Foundation, Estee Lauder Double Wear Cushion Stick Foundation, that isn't a stick foundation, and the Makeup Forever Water Blend Foundation. So here are all the foundations swatched. I have foundation like up to my armpit right now. Keep in mind while I'm ranking this, this is what works for me and what I look for in a foundation. You might absolutely love one of the foundations that I hate and vice versa. So like I always say, do your own research, watch other videos on other skin types and form your own opinions because this is just what works for me. Hands down, favorite foundation I tried during the series was a Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Water Foundation. I've worn this a few more times since filming that video. <laughs> Seriously, I think there's like powder flying around. This is a foundation that I feel like is stunning, and I think this will work for multiple different kinds of skin types. Since it is a water-based kind of serum-like foundation, I can see this working for dry skin. I have combination oily skin with cystic acne. I like high coverage foundation. This I definitely need to use a lot of to get it to the kind of coverage I like, but it is buildable. I can get it pretty dang full coverage, but to me it's worth it because the finish is so beautiful. It makes your face look super plump, super long lasting, looks incredible by the end of the night. I just like literally want to give this foundation a hug. So number two is the Urban Decay Naked Skin Weightless Ultra Definition Liquid Makeup. Choosing between these two was like kind of like picking a favorite child. This one just pulled ahead a tiny bit. This one's kind of the same situation. To get the kind of coverage I like, I use quite a bit of this, but it is super buildable. It still looks like skin, which is what I love. I'm wearing it today with a cosmetics powder. I do think I like it a little bit better with the Cover Effects powder. I mean, I think it looks great right now with this powder too, but holy shit, this powder with this foundation lasts for ever. So far out of what I've tried, I think this is the best like oil controlling combination. This foundation with this powder literally made my makeup look flawless the entire day. If I'm going to be out for like a long time and need my makeup to really last, I will definitely be reaching for these two. Okay, so foundation number three, and this was also hard, number three and four choosing between them. Oh my god, that literally just spilled all over the carpet. What just happened? BRB. All right. It's all good. So number three foundation is the Josie Marin Vibrancy Foundation Fluid. If you like a super dewy foundation but that's long lasting, I would say go with this one. This is beautiful, super glowy. If you have dry skin, I think this would be great. If you have oily skin, probably not your foundation. Number four is the Golden Rose Stick Foundation. This was like a $7, $6 foundation off of Amazon. This ranked higher than a ton of high-end foundations, so just goes to show you that drugstore or high-end, I think there are good products and bad products. I don't really like saying like for a drugstore foundation is good because I just think this is a good product regardless. I think this one will work well for normal skin. If you have oilier skin, this one might break down, but I think this is really going to come down to what powder you use to set this. I love the shade of this on me. It is pretty pale. Blends out easier than a lot of the high-end stick foundations I've tried and really quick to apply, and I just think this one rocks. So those top four are basically the ones that I was like pretty wowed by. I would say that any of those four are worth giving a go. The next three 
are ones that I think were good, but I wouldn't say I was like super, super impressed by. So number five is the YSL Touche Eclat Foundation. I think just for being so expensive, I'm not sure if this is worth the money to me. It reminds me a little bit of the Josie Marin Argan Oil Foundation. I would say this one is a little bit dewier. I like the shade of this one better for me. I think you could kind of go with either or for this, and I would personally go with this one. So number six is the Ulta Color Correcting Foundation and Primer Stick. The only reason why I ranked this one below the YSL was because I feel like this is like a very specific use for me. This isn't a long lasting product. If you're someone like me where I like to wear makeup to the beach, I like to wear makeup when I go on a run, like foundation, not a full on face, just to cover up my acne and my scarring. This is one of those products where I don't feel like I'm wasting a ton of money by using it for that purpose. I can literally apply it to my whole face in about 20 seconds. It's just super quick to blend out. Shade wise I like it. When I went on a run the other day I used this product with the Maybelline Superstay powder and that combo looked like skin, didn't look like I was wearing like a cake face of makeup to go running. So I feel like this one I wouldn't say buy this for like an everyday long lasting foundation. I'd say buy this if you want something to use for those kind of situations. Number seven is the first like matte matte foundation. This is the Catrice All Matte Plus Shine Control Makeup. And this is too dark for me, so if you are a pale princess, this one will probably be too dark for you. However, I mixed this in with the Josie Marin Vibrancy, and these two together were beautiful. Mixing these two together, formula-wise and shade-wise, worked. This one does last pretty well. If you're super oily and you're not super pale, you might like this one. So the next five are ones that I think aren't bad products. They're just ones that personally didn't quite work for me. I'm not sure if I'm going to be reaching for these ones too often. Some of these I think would be good mixing products, but I pretty much wouldn't reach for any of these to wear again totally on their own. So number eight is the JCat Beauty HD Skin Sealer Foundation. This is super affordable. If this was light enough for me, I think that I would like this. It's almost like one of those products I feel like is too dewy to set without like weird texture stuff happening. It feels very much like a gel foundation. It says it's supposed to be high coverage. I did not get good coverage with this. I would say this is something that if you have extremely dry skin, you are not super pale because this is too dark, and you want something that has like medium coverage, then you might like this. I am going to play around with this one. I would never reach for this to wear on its own again. But number nine for me is the Cover FX Click Cream Foundation. Looking at how this blended out is what ranked this kind of low. I do think that this wore well and this is super pale. Golden Rose Stick Foundation blends out way easier than this. You definitely need to use some kind of smoothing primer to give yourself a super soft canvas to blend this out on top of or else you're just going to have a rough time blending this product out. It's just kind of mediocre, like I think there are way better stick foundations that you could spend your money on. Okay, so number 10, and this one ranked this low for a variety of different reasons. So the number one thing to me is just I just think this product is a huge ripoff. I broke down like the price and how much product you get and all that kind of stuff in this review video. This is just extremely expensive for the amount of product you're getting. And I want to restate because it seems like some people were a little bit confused. This really isn't a stick foundation. The name stick is in the name, but it is a liquid foundation packaged in a stick like packaging with a cushion top. Yes, it makes sense that stick foundations, you get less product than normal because they're usually more densely pigmented. Typically, you should have to use a little bit less than a liquid foundation, which makes sense. This foundation is just packaged in a stick, I feel like, honestly, so that they could give less product and charge more. That just like really irks me. I don't like that. If you can get over spending like double for a liquid foundation, I do think the product is nice if you like dewy medium coverage. This doesn't have high coverage. When you build this up, you can get it to a medium coverage. The color for me is a little bit off, I feel like. It's not quite light enough. I don't think it's worth this much money to like mix in with other products. 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm literally having to count every single time. The number 11 is the LC Micro Silk Foundation. This is one of those products that I think is totally fine. It's just not for me. Again, it's the same kind of situation for the price of it. I just don't think it's worth really mixing in with other foundations for me. I don't know, even if you're someone who likes light coverage, I would still say go with the Tarte or the Urban Decay. You can definitely wear those more sheer since I use a ton of product and build it up to get it how full coverage I like it. 
Personally, I think that one's a tad overhyped. So number 12 is the Makeup Forever Water Blend Foundation. This is extremely, extremely sheer. This is definitely the most sheer foundation that I own and that I have ever put on my face. If it wasn't for this series, I definitely wouldn't have even tried to make this one work. With three layers, I got it about a high light coverage, which I think says a lot about how sheer this product really is. The other thing that really threw me off about this is that it did cling to my dry patches, and for being a water blend foundation, I just think that is so bizarre. If you have freckles and you're literally looking to like even out a tiny bit, of your redness where you don't want it to cover your freckles at all you might like this personally would never use this again probably would not even mix this in with other stuff just because it's kind of like mixing in water <laughs> all right on to the final three foundations which was kind of like ranking my favorite piece of trash honestly ranking these three are like kind of a joke it's literally like saying which shitty chore do you like the best you know what i'm saying so the best worst foundation is the Dermablend cover cream. The formula of this was just like a total bust for me. Applying this just takes forever. I just really couldn't think of one benefit of this besides the fact that it is super light, but even then there are just as light foundations that have way better formulas, which by the way, I have a extremely pale foundation video coming, like foundations that are too light for me. So that will be coming. I already have it filmed, edited, ready to go. Wouldn't recommend this at all. I am so confused by some of the reviews I'm seeing coming out about this product. This is the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. I'm just kind of like honestly mind blown. So I tried wearing this again in the five days when I was like trying out different foundations. I was like, okay, I'm gonna use a different setting powder. Let's make this work. I kind of have hope, kind of not, but like let's try it out. So I applied this again, set it with the Maybelline. I feel like I'm losing my voice right now. Applied it with the Maybelline Better Skin Powder. Pretty much every day when I was trying out these foundations, I was updating you guys on Snapchat so you can see how they looked. I literally had to take this off my face by about 1 p.m. because it looked so horrible. It was breaking down on my forehead, it was breaking down around my nose, it looked horrible horrible. If you have made this work for you, tell me how. Like what powder and primer are you using? Number 15 is the Soap and Glory One Heck of a Blot Liquid to Powder Foundation. I have like no words. <laughs> if you want to be entertained, you should definitely go back and watch this video because I really don't think I've ever worn a foundation that right off the bat looks this bad. It says it's full coverage, this isn't full coverage off of one layer. On the first layer, it still looked bad. It was patchy, I had such a foundation mustache going on, like the most texture and weird shit I've ever seen going on on my face. I love some of Soap and Glory's other products, this one just really was a miss. All right, so that was all 15 foundations ranked. I hope that you guys enjoyed this series and that it helped you find a foundation that you're excited to try out or that you already have tried out and that you love. If you guys are new here or if you found me through this series, please leave a comment down below. There are a bunch of new Bayritos here, so leave a comment down below if you found my channel through this series because that's awesome. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and you're excited about Foundation Fridays. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.